Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Another edition of the Sustainiacs podcast with Mr. Michael Vincent, podcaster extraordinaire, uh, president <laughs> of Ocean Plastic Technologies USA. And we partner together also on fuel and emissions reduction with cyber fuels. So with all of this stuff we're doing, we're helping the environment and we're bringing money to people. So it's kind of a win-win. Bags, bags of money. <laughs> bags, bags and bags. Bags That's and right. bags of money. That's but, right. Yeah. That's right. And it and it they're recyclable bags though. They're they're biodegradable. That is they're. perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, you don't even have to use a bag if you don't want to. Just go green. Just yeah, that's right. the green. Remember when yeah. remember when selecting a plastic bag was like the thing to do? Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah. Everything was paper and it was like, would you like paper or plastic? Oh, give me plastic. Oh, give me plastic. Save, yeah. I want to save the planet. Give me plastic. Oh yeah. man. That was a thing. That was actually a thing, right? Oh man. There's another great documentary on plastics and I can't remember the name of it, but it's uh, showing these recycling centers that are just piles and mounds and mounds and how much of the plastic actually gets recycled versus incinerated. I told you. It's I crazy. Told you. It's, it's crazy, baloney. man. Yeah, it's wish cycling, man. It is not happening. The single stream huge MRFs do not work. That's what we're solving at OPT. Hit me up and I'll tell you how to do it. And hit me up, hit me up twice. Listen, if you wanna if you want to sa save on your on your fuel costs and help reduce emissions, or you want to learn about what's really going on and how we can actually solve the plastic problem and, and make it circular and reduce carbon footprint at the same time, hit me up. I got both solutions. I've got it. Oh. I'm like a superhero. I'm like a superhero, Andy. It's like a boom, drop the mic. Boom. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so, you know, Michael, you and I were chatting back and forth, and you were the moderator at TIA That's on right. the sustainability and logistics panel. And that was in Orlando, right? It was the first ever sustainability and logistics panel for TIA. Yeah, and that Very would be cool. a, a year you think it was well attended, man. It was one of the breakout sessions. We got about we, we got about ten percent of the total audience. It was a good show. One shout out to Ann Ranky, she killed it and her team. It was awesome. Two thousand plus people. Um, but yeah, we got we got a uh, I would say we got about two hundred people in that room uh, to to watch that uh, that panel discussion. It was great. Lars Ward from Freight Vana was on it. Uh, Bart DeMonk. Uh, chief industry officer from Project 44 was on that. Yeah. And um, Jordan Strawn, uh, COO at uh, Reed TMS, right? Uh, was was on that panel. So it was it was it was really good. It was it was a really good panel. Um, you know, we didn't we were going to have uh, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, but he was out repairing potholes in the street uh, in Orlando. But he was going to he was going to moderate it. That's why I filled in. Because he could, he wasn't unavailable. I don't know if you saw that or not on the AP. I saw a little news blurb about Arnold slinging some weight around, but it was like asphalt repair on a road. Yeah, I see him on I see him on Nautic, uh, you know, on Nautilus equipment and stuff like that, which he never did back in the day when he was, you know, Mister Universe and stuff like that. Nah, he didn't Nautilus. He was throwing on rocks and stuff like that. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, yeah, no. So I mean, he's still he's still a hey, get it done, right? I mean, there was potholes or whatever. They weren't even potholes. It was actually they were they put in a new like gas line or something, and then like the city is supposed to have that like filled in with like a within like 30 days or something but because of the rains in southern california they didn't do it but arnold got sick of it so he grabbed one of his security guards or his henchmen i don't know what they call him and uh one of his entourage there his uh his posse and right. they went out and, and uh, got themselves some asphalt which you know i wouldn't even know where i would buy like some asphalt for personal use but he did and they went out there with shovels and they started filling it in <laughs> He went out there just like, like, what the hell are you doing? And he said, well, you're supposed to do this. I'm just taking shit into my own hand. I'm going to get this done, right? And then, so then they started filling in other gas. He's like, he got it done, right? Yes. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was, um, you know, some work on the road from some utility company that yeah, yeah. was delayed by, I don't remember, two or three months or something. Yeah, they're supposed to have it done within like a month, but they were like two or a couple months behind because of <laughs> right. rain and stuff or whatever it is. So he's just like, forget it. I'm going to get this done. 
I mean, that's and that's what it is. And and you know what? And it, and, and and really, I, I sent this to you as a as a as a hey, let's just talk about this tongue in cheek. But it actually fits, right? Because I mean, one of the things that you and I are partnered up about is hey, there are solutions coming down, and who knows? Maybe we'll have a Mister Fusion on our trucks one of these days, and you throw a couple banana peels in there and and a and a package of crackers, and and you can run for five hundred miles. I don't know. But and then you fly, you needed. fly your car with on the banana. Yeah, that's right. And that that yes. well, the banana peels is what does that, right? Electrical right. banana. That's that's what it does. That, <laughs> right. That's the one that gets you the elevation. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, but until we get there, there's things you can do and actually save money while you're doing it, right? With cyber fuels. I mean, it, that's I mean, it, I can almost relate everything to what we're trying to do in sustainability, whether it's from my personal angle, which is the plastic side of it or from the cyber fuels that you and I are partnered on and that you're so passionate about, which is also a big passion of mine is reducing those emissions, right? Because you can reduce your costs and your emissions at the same time, which is crazy because most people think that ESG or going green costs companies money, right? But it doesn't have to be that way. But I did find this article <laughs> that I can't possibly really, maybe you can figure out or the audience, some of the audiences can figure out how to relate this to like cyber fuels. Okay. Anyway, All right. I don't know, but this was also from the AP and, okay. and it, 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 it caught my eye because of the irony because it's just so backwards. Right. There's there's a nudist beach in Vienna, which to me is like, okay, how many beaches are there in Vienna, Austria? I I, I didn't imagine that there were any, to tell you the truth. Right. Uh, but there's there are enough that at least one of them is nudist. And and so <laughs> when <laughs> the 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 country or municipality, whatever, is building a, a cable car that goes across part of it, and the nudists are um upset because they they think that their privacy is going to be invaded <laughs> <laughs> hey it's a segue I mean, man so that's very <laughs> revealing you're revealing <laughs> truth they're revealing other things exactly okay all right that's good that's good i like that <laughs> i just thought it was funny man i'm a nudist oh, man. out here and get naked but i don't want anybody to see me <laughs> new, new, new. right so, you know, my mind went to why wouldn't you just like rent yourself a little cabana and be maybe like nude inside of there or something? Or stay home. You know. Or stay home, yeah. <laughs> or wear a bathing suit. Did you guys bring bathing suits to Orlando? Is it oh, warm? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I took I took the family. I mean, it, I took my wife and my two my two uh, girls and we, we went down and um, yeah, we stayed at a place near there. Uh, uh, reunion, which is, is is nice. Not a real plug for them, but it's cool. Uh, and, uh, yeah, hung out at the water parks and stuff like that when I wasn't, uh, moderating the panel, which was the start of this discussion, wasn't it? The panel? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Is that what we were supposed to be talking about? You know, true. And, but Orlando's amazing. I love it. We've been there quite a few times uh, as a family yeah. and it's a lot yeah. of fun, but yeah, on that, on that panel, sustainability and logistics, you know, uh, what were some of the key talking points that you guys were talking about? Yeah. So, I mean, it, part of it was, was, you know, kind of talking about what um, is being done at the three different companies that were represented there, right? Freight Vaughn on Project 44 and, and Reed TMS. And they each have their real interesting things that they do, right? Like Freight Vaughn does their one tree for every load, right? Which is, is tremendous. And they've got tens and tens, hundreds of thousands of trees that are being planted. And they, and they work with this company, uh, One Tree, and and it, it is or ten tree, and it is. Um, I mean, it's tremendous because you can pick where you're going to have these these trees planted, et cetera. And um, it's 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 excellent work, and it's an interesting way to get the community inside and outside of Freight Vana involved, right? And it also is, you know, it's sequestering CO two, so it it makes sense to pair that with with uh, you know transportation and intermediaries. Project 44 is 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 obvious because what they provide as a service can be used for uh, reducing emissions and increasing efficiency, which we can get into in a minute. But then read like read TMS, uh, you know, they were looking for their their type of thing. And Sean yeah, or Jordan Strawn uh, shared with us that, you know, the way it developed is it, it, when it went into the office, it was raining like crazy. You know, they're in Tampa, Tampa area. They're, they're, they're over there by Falkenberg and route four and, and 75. But um, I think it's Riverview, Florida, whatever it is. 
but uh, walked in there. It was raining and their ceiling was the roof was leaking. <laughs> right? Oh, wow. So um, they covered it in solar panels. Really? They had to redo the roof anyways. So they recovered, you know, they, less money fixed the whole problem and went green by covering it in, in solar panels. And, and now they're, you know, they're, they're off the grid. Um, at least a significant portion, if I recall, I can't remember the exact percentage, but it's pretty, pretty high. They're off right. the grid. So, I mean, there's different things that can definitely be done. So it was, one of them was talking about those type of things, right. That can, that can be used um, to bridge gaps, to help, to take those steps forward, to make things go on. Again, much like cyber fuels, but um, it, so it, so it can be done. But a lot of a lot of the discussion was also uh, was was centered around what can an intermediary do, what should an intermediary intermediary do, and what is an intermediary going to be legally held responsible to do in the future, if not now, as far as you know reducing emissions and being green and so on and so forth. And so that was kind of it, having that discussion. And one of the things that was asked, um, uh, Andy, was in, in, when you look at RFPs, is the question and do you have to prove um, your greenness or your sustainability? Every single hand went up. Every single hand went up. Yeah. RFPs increasingly, increasingly, you have to not only say you're green and agree with it, got prove you are in some way and right. there's more and more data collection um out there that uh requires you and will expose you if you're not um so i mean it, it, they won't even have to right now if you subscribe to certain to certain um uh data services i guess it is a certification services um you don't even have to ask that question because they'll tell you you know, it, <clears throat> you punch in Michael Vincent trucking or Andy Hedrick trucking, and this service can tell you whether we're green or not. We're in a certain score, level of score. And um, if you're already using me, it can go in there and, and you can, you know, sign up for these services. And it will, it will actually evaluate your entire supply chain and show you where those weak links and strong links are. So you, you're going to be exposed. And that was one of the things, no matter who you are. You are somebody's emissions, either one, two, or three. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, you're on the scope, so to speak, right? And it, 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 scope three doesn't mean it's less important than scope one. <laughs> it doesn't, that's not how it works. It's not like degrees of murder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Right. right. <laughs> yeah, no, it all matters. It all matters. Right? Yeah, it's just who's responsible. And if you're a carrier, you have, it, like, just like everybody, if you're a carrier, you have your ones, twos, and threes, right? You, you absolutely do. But here's the thing. Your core business is somebody's scope three. That's your core business. So if you don't fix your greenness, your scope one, you ain't getting the business. Right. You, you just, right. You're just not. You know, and, and it's not like, it's not like Andy, like, um, you know, I'm going to buy this soft drink over that soft drink because this one has sustainable packaging. Right? It's not that type of a choice anymore. It is this shipper is not going to use this carrier because this carrier isn't green because they can't. They're not allowed to. Their, sh their shareholders won't allow them to. The mandates, the incentives or tax structures or payments that you have to pay uh, – that are in several, many states in the United States, not federal yet, but the EU, if you do business in the EU next year, Andy, you're going to have to pay a carbon tax, period. It doesn't matter where you're from. But if you're not doing that, you're not getting a business. And it's not a choice type of thing. It is a, you're just not going to get that business. Right. You're not going to win that bid. You're not going to get it. Yeah. And, and of even course if you're an incumbent, it's not like it new bids, you're not going to get. Incumbents are going to be kicked out. Like I always say, the haves and have nots, they're changing because of sustainability, whether it's your own sustainability or outside of your scope, it will impact you. You need to pay attention. You need to do something, right? right. That's, that's kind of like what we're talking about. Absolutely. And the government has mandated certain amounts of biomaterial, biodiesels um, that have to be done. And yeah. there are, it's a mandate, you know, you have to do it. And um, the good news on that front though, is um, with cyber fuels, we can take that 
that diesel that has more particulate matter in it and burn it more cleanly and more efficiently mm -hmm. and actually that's save right. companies money while they go green, you know? And so that's the, exciting, yeah. that's the exciting part of it. Well, it's, it's what's really cool about it. And I, and, and the synergy that is there and maybe people don't care about this, but they should, because it's not, this is, this is important in everything in life, right? Is that it just because X doesn't work, doesn't mean you need to throw it away and do Y. Okay. Just make, if, if you make X better, maybe it is the, still the solution. You're just not doing it right. Maybe you're doing the right thing wrong. If anybody remembers that type of stuff, right? Right thing, right, right thing, wrong, wrong thing, right, wrong thing, wrong, that type of stuff, right? The whole Malcolm Baldridge awards and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, previous, mm -hmm. you know, TQM, right. Before there was, there was uh, ISO and, and six Sigma, it was packaged as TQM. They just made it a different, yeah. Six Sigma is not new folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. It's been around a long, long time, just called a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. Uh, so you, you can, you can, you can fix like, just like what, like bio D like, uh, um, uh, cyber fuels, cyber fuels is taking diesel, which are oh bad. It's going to kill everything. Right? No. If we burn it the right way and we, and we work on it, it can actually be a fairly clean fuel and maybe completely fuel clean. Who knows as, as we develop this type of stuff, same mm -hmm. thing with, with OPT, we're not saying plastic is the devil and plastic needs to be eliminated. Our lives would completely suck without plastics in fact our healthcare industry wouldn't exist without plastic let's just put it that way just think about that okay <clears throat> think about everything that that plastic that helps our, our just our healthcare industry work okay done think, you're going on a fishing trip right you're going on a business slash fishing trip imagine nothing you take with you can be plastic good luck mm. have fun have a lot of fun with that um <laughs> As you stand in the stream naked, trying to catch a fish with your hand. <laughs> some people may pay to see that. You know, take some videos. We'll talk about it next week on the podcast. I matter. think I would probably go and try and find some bamboo somewhere before I went naked in the stream, I think. <laughs> <laughs> How did we get to you naked in a stream catching fish? <laughs> oh yeah, you, 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 if we do things better, we can get to the real solutions. And who knows? Maybe we discover the real solution is right there in front of us. Right? Same thing with OPT. If we recycle differently and we change the infrastructure, the 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 the, the supply chain, the logistics of it, it actually can become a fairly efficient and environmentally friendly substance if we do it the right way right? Because the solution isn't getting rid of it. The solution right now is to cut off all diesel and fuel right now and just go to uh, EVs. EVs, they catch on fire, dude. I mean, every vehicle could catch on fire at some point, but there's at least one or two that I know of EVs. And I'm sure there's more. I don't know the exact number, but there's at least one because I read about it this morning and I've heard about it before. So there's got to be two that just, they, they overheat, the batteries overheat and they, and they, and they catch on fire, right? And there's probably people going, oh, yeah, but that's like one or two percent or something. Well, if one or two percent of like the Cascadias running around the United States just randomly went up in flames. You think there might be a recall? You think? Maybe? No, I, I think so. And, you know, the other part of it is ATRI did a big study on the electric carbon chain. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it shows that between manufacturing, mining, distribution, all the capacity you lose, et cetera, from electric, that it was more carbon. So, oh, yeah, we've got to be, you know, it's like doing the wrong things right in that case. Like, oh, we're doing this thing. Yeah, but it's is that the, right the answer? Thing. Is that the answer? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then the coal fired powered plants are electric. Yeah, no, the carbon intensive. And the carbon intensity it. of the production of, of the EV and the batteries and everything like that, I think. I read it was like on average, like the average truck, I, th I think they assume like the average truck goes like 120,000 miles in a year or something like that is what they were trying to, is, that's the number that they used. And it was still like two and a half years before you got to carbon neutral on an EV. Right. And that's if, that's if, if, if it's being charged with green electricity, which doesn't exist. Right. <laughs> right. Green electricity. I love it.
<laughs> Where's yeah. that coming from? I mean, I know I that know. there's some, there's some solar farms and and there's some wind farms sure. and things uh, that are, but when you're talking about 2.9 million big rigs, um, a solar farm and a, some wind farms aren't gonna aren't gonna cut it. I don't think. No, they're not. They're they're absolutely they're absolutely not going to cut it. And <laughs> and here's the other thing that that's got to be figured out is you know the problem with the grid is saying this right and and I you know I feel like I'm like a broken record talking about this stuff, but it's important and there's new data and people you know coming to you know uh, realizations of some of the challenges that are out there, and you know the 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 organizations that buy and sell. Um, electricity, right? The privatization of the grid, like in Texas and stuff like that, right? We had the deep freeze and all that kind of stuff, right? That's one issue that that can occur. But the reason that that occurs is because of money. Follow the money, you'll find the answer, most likely in 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 our society. The way we've built our society, that's kind of like Occam's razor, right? Money, boom, there's your answer. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent, it, it's usually the answer. But so so they buy and sell energy, right, is is basically what's going on here, right? And sometimes it's more expensive and sometimes it's less expensive, right? And so during that freeze, right, people were getting bills for like 100 grand for for their for one month of electricity because of what happened there, right? And that's like oh crap, we didn't realize this could happen. But what's happening is when sometimes wind is blowing a lot in in these forms and and so solar becomes cheaper. And so they buy energy from solar. Sometimes the sun is in certain seasons, the sun is, is shining more and they actually buy solar power more than they do traditional. And then sometimes neither one of those are so great and they're buying the traditional energy, right? And moving it. And th th this actually is how it works. This isn't, I'm not making this up. This is how this works. And so what happens is that, that, that cash, you want to call it extra revenue or extra capital or whatever it is, but that investment capital, the, the capital expenditures to maintain and improve the grid, they're not what they used to be because of the green electricity we're trying to produce, right? So our efforts to go solar and wind are actually making it more difficult for us to upgrade the grid, right? Without additional taxpayer money going in there or altruistic efforts and stuff like that. The energy companies don't have that money anymore. You can't run a nuclear plant 50% of the time and have it work. You can't have solar energy rolling through half the time and then expect the coal plant to be efficient and ready to pick up the remainder when the sun's not shining. Then we're well, and well, there was a major league issue in Texas where during a major ice storm, there wasn't power and people yeah, died. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of it was attributed to, well, the wind farms weren't running and there was not enough sun. Because they were frozen. They were frozen. Exactly. <laughs> I know they exactly were frozen, what you're talking about. And then there was so much cloud cover for so long that there was no solar. There was no solar. Yeah. So we got to be that's that, yeah, we gotta be smart. Yep. We yep. gotta be smart. And we have to realize that. What we have right now, it, it, we can we'll get there. We're going to get there. We can and we can get there. I, I'm totally confident in that millions. And, and I'm not saying that solar is bad or wind is bad. I'm saying we need to take baby steps and move forward and think what are the outcomes that are going to happen here, right? And a lot of times that doesn't happen, Andy, because people jump on and say, "Oh, money! I can make money. I can invest." Well, hell, if we let the investment community run, run, you know, automotive, like my friend Zach Strickland says, they would build an engine that goes from zero to a thousand miles an hour in a quarter mile and then explodes at the end. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. <laughs> that, that, that's how stupid financial is at, at building things. It's, it's not, 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 not the most efficient. You know, and I think we're in this period, Michael, where, you know, there was the industrial revolution. Then there was kind of the information age, right? Yeah. We're yeah. in a like sustainability revolution economy. I mean, there are going to be changes to supply chains and changes, but change is difficult sometimes, but change can be very good. And um, if you're in the right place and you position yourself well, you can actually take advantage while going greener, frankly. You can, you can, e you can make money. IBM, um, 
did a, uh, a, a, a study. I saw it in Forbes a couple, couple days ago. Actually, I, 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 I did a little two minute segment uh, and that was part of the two minute segment a few days ago. Um, but like 2000, 2000, some odd executives across the, the 34 countries, like 20 different verticals, et cetera, et cetera. 71% ESG efforts uh, are, are actually profitable. They're more profitable because of those efforts. And if you think about it, you know, the, and, and I get, you know, I got haters, you know, I've made it, I've arrived. I've got haters, Andy. I've got people who are just like, Oh, ESG is racketeering and blah, blah, blah. And I'll never invest in a company with ESG. Well, okay, great. Because one person says ESG is just a way for a company to make more money because it's racketeering. And the other says, I'm not going to invest them because you don't like to make money on your investment. I, I don't understand. You're uh, anyway, <clears throat> if it was racketeering, I'd be cheering if I was an investor because I'd be like, hell yeah, you got ESG. I'm investing, man. Right. <laughs> right I mean? Exactly. But uh, legalized racketeering. Sweet. I can make money as an investor. But the point is, is that over 70 percent is like 71 or 73 percent of these guys said that that more profitable. And if you think about it, it makes sense because you're looking for ways to do things more efficient, less waste, whether it be emissions or not. You're looking for ways to do things smarter. And that's one of the things that we talked about heavily on the panel as well, Andy, and especially with like uh, Bart DeMunk at P44, but all three of them, Lars and Jordan as well, and everybody in the room, I think, agreed, is the responsibility of, of the intermediary and really all of us is to do things as, as efficiently as we possibly can, right? Because when we use things efficiently, we're handling our resources in a responsible manner. We're being responsible stewards of our, of our resources, right? Whether those be whether your resources is, is, is data, electricity, or raw minerals, or it doesn't, or humans, it doesn't matter if it's human resources, or et cetera. If you're using it responsibly and in the most efficient manner and the least wasteful, you're going to improve the environment. You're going to improve your impact on that environment, and you're going to improve your bottom line, period. I mean, it's, it's really quite that simple, isn't it? Yep, exactly. And I love talking about this, these topics with you, Michael. You know, um, you can make money and go greener at the yeah, same yeah, time. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And if you uh, doubt it, hit up, hit up Andy, it, it hit up at, at cyber fuels. <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. Show you exactly how to make money and go greener. We have a uh, Michael's special sustaining acts page here below. So that's the one. Yeah. Go through this. If you call Andy direct, he's just going to say, Hey, hang up, go through this page. Oh, Michael. <laughs> Probably not. He's not going to do that, but, but yeah, go through there anyways. Yes, absolutely. Unless you're well, one of my haters, then, you know, whatever. Well, you know, people resist change. That's all there is to that, you know, yeah. and uh, and eventually it's like like going from the horse and buggy to a car. There were people saying, if you drive 25 miles an hour in a car, you're going to die. But <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen, right? No. It, did, it did not happen. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, back in the day, I don't know. I had a buddy in high school who had a, had a Comet station wagon, no seatbelts and a steel dashboard. Oh man, you wouldn't have to go a lot faster than 25 to die in that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think the point they were trying to make was our bodies couldn't take that kind of speed increase. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I think we've, we've survived that. Yeah. Luckily, <laughs> luckily we did. That, that's probably around the time when cars were ele electric, right? I mean, they were electric back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I think there were. was some there was some electric, there was some steam going on. There was, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There, and then it became combustion, of course. But yeah, uh, how come nobody's going back to steam engines? Oh, you got to burn coal. That's right. You can't just have steam. That's true. Yes. Steam just true. doesn't, it doesn't occur. <laughs> there has to be some sort of catalyst. Or you would have to attach 55 solar panels and two wind sails to your car. <laughs> to create enough heat <laughs> to, to have some steam. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I know you could get some batteries and put them on there and then perform electrolysis on methane to convert it to hydrogen and then burn the hydrogen in order to create steam. Hey, and the steam would turn a turbine to create the electricity. To, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like a perpetual motion uh, class eight. Let's get some investors, Andy. Let's go for it.
Oh boy. Well, that might be a tough sledding right there. Uh, <laughs> Maybe when you're back from your naked and afraid fishing trip. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Exactly right. Well, Michael, I guess, uh, you know, we're headed in the right direction, I think, as a society. Um, yeah. And we're going to keep on doing these topics, of course. Uh, love podcasting with you. And uh, that'll do it for this episode of the Trucking Tower Podcast, Sustainiacs edition. And uh, thanks for coming on again, Michael. Right on, man. Peace and love, everybody. Peace and love. Peace and love.